It's great to be with you. Ah, yeah. All right, so um, I thought you might like this one. Uh, the pastor begins like this. He says, oh, dear Lord, with arms extended in this rapturous look. He says, uh, face upturned. He says, oh, dear Lord, without you, we are but dust. And he would have continued, but right at that moment, a woman with a little girl sitting right in the middle of the church leaned over to her mommy and said in that whisper that little children have that is very loud, Mommy, what's butt dust? <laughs> and pretty much church was over at that point. Um, so uh, everybody, I'm sure, has heard of the author M. Scott Peck. He said that life is a series of problems. Do you want to moan about them or solve them? Hmm, wow, do we want to moan about them or solve them? I think science of mind is very much geared toward the solving of them. I was uh, sharing, uh, visiting with a woman recently who was saying that she felt like uh, she had, was still in a period of time where everything seemed like it was an effort. You know, and I thought, well, I can kind of relate to that. Yeah, things certainly can feel like they are um, a real, real effort. Um, in my own life, personally, I like to read success stories about people, you know, people who did it, you know, those rags to riches stories. I don't even have to be rags to riches stories, just people who succeeded at something. Because, you know, in all of them, I find that they use spiritual principle, whether they knew they were using it or not, but they were acting in accord with spiritual principle, and that's what allowed them, what supported them to rise up and embrace life in a greater way. And, you know, it, it, Looking from the outside, you can never tell who's going to do it, you know? I love that some people um, are told not to, you know? Like, no, this is not for you, absolutely not. And they go ahead and do it anyway, you know? I think when I was a kid, I was very much uh, that kid, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, that uh, tell me I couldn't do something or I was uh, too young or for whatever reason, and, and I was just determined. I was just determined. You know, we think very often that things out here in the outer world are what keep us from experiencing or having uh, being what we want. But ex when we say something like, well, these external conditions, these external people are what prevent me. These external things are what make it so difficult for me. They're what make it take so long. But you know, the truth is that the externals we experience in the outer world here, Science of Mind teaches us that they are only a reflection of our own beliefs. You know, and if those uh, reflections out here are not good, they are our reflections of our limiting beliefs, our false beliefs, our error beliefs. Oneness with God is oneness with your own, how would I say, your own personal power, right? There is no competition there. Um, and, and what I see, though, is that people are so willing often to just, uh, to say they have faith, but then they give it away. You know, uh, uh, that faith is knowing where the power, where the understanding is. And where it is, science of mind says, it is deep within you. It's in the very core of your being. So we want to not be giving our faith away. Now, faith is not a belief. When I'm talking about faith, I'm talking about faith is knowledge. You know when you know something, you really, really, really know something because you've had the experience and nobody convinced, can convince you otherwise, even though they may have a completely different experience. This, is, this, this kind of faith is knowledge, you know, and it's an acceptance of, of what is. At any time, I think there's much bigger going on than our own individual personal drama. You know, and what we could call that is we could say, well, this is the evolution of the planetary consciousness, and every one of us, we are actually a part of it. So our thinking and our praying and the inner life that we create and maintain for ourselves is important, actually, to the whole planetary consciousness. So if for no other reason, if you said, gee, I don't want to pray today, I don't want to meditate today, you could also say, but I will do it for the good of the planet. I will do it to help upraise the consciousness of humanity. If we only try to fix things from the outside, though, is to believe that outside of us is where the power is. And I know we all have things in our life out here, circumstances, people, events, that we would like to shift the shape of those things a little bit. We'd like them to be finessed in some way. But the world outside of us, it seems to me, does not support our growth and our expression and our magnificence. The world outside kind of says, stay where you are, stay small, don't push the boundaries too much. 
So if we're looking to the world outside of us, if we're looking for externals to give us permission, I don't think we're going to get it. We have to know when we sit in the seat of our own soul, when we sit to pray and meditate, that you know we give the inner light permission to burst forth and shine. And we say, well, how, how, how can I do that? How can me, little old me, do that? Because you are of God. Because you are of God, you give the light of God that is within you permission to burst forth in new and better ways. You know, our focus really in the science of mind, I know we talk about demonstrating all the time, but our focus really is seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added. Right? So Goldsmith, Joel Goldsmith talks about this as simply going to God for God. Right? Not to get anything, not with a shopping list, but going to God to be in the presence of God. Right? And that as we do this, consciousness naturally expands. You know, So seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added. I used to hear when I was young this phrase, uh, it seemed like adults were always saying, well, you know, do the right thing, do the right thing, do the right thing. And you know, um, I realize that now that people were giving me credit for knowing what the right thing was. <laughs> so that's good in the first time. It's like, oh, they were giving me credit for that. But, but also that there's something principled about doing the right thing. I believe that the right thing always involves spiritual principle. If we do the right thing, it, it will naturally carry the blessings of God. It will unfold as it's supposed to. It will include all it's supposed to. All that's required for its execution will show up. When, when I'm peaceful in here, I don't want to say in here, but I mean in my head and in my heart, when I'm peaceful in here, um, it seems like everything out here works a little better, doesn't it? Everything out here is a little more peaceful. And what that has to be is that has to be a reflection of my consciousness at the moment. So if I ask, and I want us all to ask, what is my part to do here? Whatever we're given, we must do that. Because you know, you can't have a relationship with God, with spirit, with the intelligence of the universe, ask for guidance, receive the guidance, and then reject it. Do you think guidance will continue to come? It's not. So when we receive whatever it is we receive, we have to make our best effort to do that. I don't think we have to, to compete, you know, uh, because, well, then what, what do we do if we're not competing? I think we hold it differently. Rather than competing with others to get my good, my good comes through a consciousness of knowing that what I do in the world serves God. How does it serve God? It serves God because I infuse it with the best consciousness I possibly can. I try to treat other people respectfully. I try to be loving, right? So th this is how we serve God. We give it all to God. We align with God. I give this to the place that is the most true, the most loving, the most authentic within me, right? When I say I'm giving it to God, I'm not giving it to something way far away or outside or separate from me. I'm giving it to that place that is authentically me, most loving me, the most expression of truth that's me. See, it's very interesting to me that sometimes the people who accomplish great things aren't actually trying to achieve them. That's just always amazing. It's like, wow, they weren't even trying, and look what they did. To say I serve God, though, the bottom line is to say I serve love. Right? And what does that mean? That love is the process whereby we wake up to who we are and to who everybody else is true. Right? So as we become new, our world becomes new. You know, in India, they have this saying, and I know it will not be unfamiliar to you, and it's namaste. So when people see each other, they, they put their hands together in a prayer posture, and they bow, and they say namaste. And there are lots of translations for this, but the one I really like is that the God in me recognizes and honors the God in you. I mean, what a wonderful thing to say to other people, like, hey, I know God's in you, and I see it. Yeah, can't fool me with that disguise. I know God's in there. So I love that. I love that whole namaste idea. In fact, when we get back to, well, you know, I don't know that we're going to shake hands again, so I think it's going to be elbows, fists, and namaste. That's kind of like our own little religious science dance there, isn't it? Elbows, fists, and namaste. <laughs> elbows, fists, namaste. Yeah, I can do that. Um, uh, I think our behavior, obviously, uh, to me it's obvious that our behavior is determined by our self-perception, you know, by how I think of myself and how I view the world through the lens that is me. And when I 
can say, all right, I will accept things exactly, exactly as they are. See, people don't want to accept things as they are because they think they won't change. And I think just the opposite. I think by accepting things exactly as they are, that gives them permission to change. That gives them the space to change. You know, so if, if you're down in yourself and you say those kinds of things that people so often say, you know, I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I don't have enough, blah, blah, blah. If you resist yourself, you're not showing yourself um, self-respect. You're not showing yourself compassion. You're not showing yourself love. So you try to fix those things, but you're still coming from um, what I call a place of self-loathing, a place of self-contempt, right? And that's not what the universe, and, and if you do, if you come from that place, this is why we have to understand the law. If you come from that place, this is what the universe has to give back to you. Not because God wants to send you something that isn't of the highest order, but because that's what you, you put out there. You know, if you resist yourself, you're not going to show yourself love and compassion and self-respect. And then the universe says, well, a lack of love, a lack of compassion, a lack of self-respect must be what he wants. So let's give him that. <gasps> oh, man. What a realization to know that of everything I have ever been through in my life, I was there for all of it, you know? I mean, I happened to show up for every single thing. See, that's what the universe gives back to us. So we cannot affect change in any kind of a permanent way unless we get really, really to the root of the problem. Now, Ernest Holmes said, in order to have a demonstration, we have to have both conscious and subjective agreement. So our conscious mind, as well as our subconscious or our subjective mind, has to be saying yes, fully and completely. Now, we also teach that with God, all things are possible. By myself, uh, not so much. You know, with God, all things are possible. With Mark, eh, not too much. Okay, so recognize that all of us, we are in a process, right? This is a process. Science of mind is a way of life. And so we look at the specific response uh, to something we do in the world to see how we're doing. How did people respond to that? How did the world respond? You know, so, so for example, if you apply for a job, and the most natural thing people would say is, well, gee, did I, did I get the job? But that's not actually the whole point. I think from the big spiritual perspective, if you went to the interview, um, that's great because in some way you were being grown, you were being educated in that experience. So how was I grown in the experience? Was my heart open? You know, was I the person I wanted to be in that interview? Was, was this preparing me for maybe something that's coming up in my life? Did I get a better sense of myself as a person in that process? So on one level, there's the interview for the job, but on the other, there's, a, there's a spiritual level where all these other things are going on that maybe, so maybe you don't get that job from that interview, but maybe you are in the process of being shaped into something that can get something that's even better for you. I believe that that's what's happening. See, if we, if it is our intention, and I believe it is, on a daily basis to serve the forces of love, then the universe supports us because this is a friendly universe. Ernest Holmes was very clear about that, that we live in a friendly, a loving universe, a universe that is saying yes to us all the time, if it seems hostile to us, okay? If we think it's hostile, then that must also be a reflection of some hostility uh, that we still hold to the forces of love. Hmm. So I believe we want whatever it is we do, whatever we're being in the world, to be used by God. I know I do, don't you? We want our life, our skills, our talents, our abilities, our intelligence, whatever we have to offer, we want it to be used by God, by the spirit of love and intelligence for the highest and greatest good. That for all of us, I, I think we desire to be vessels for God's love. And by that, I mean we want our work to be a vessel for God's love. We want our physical body to be a vessel for God's love, our creative expression, our money, you name it, all to be used by God. See, because this is ultimately fulfilling, to know at the end of the day that what God wanted me to do, you know, uh, and what God wanted me to do, I did, which I believe is God wanted me to love other people. Uh, God wanted me to love myself. God wants me to love God, which is kind of the other people part, you know. Um, 
I had something I was going to share here, and oh, here it is. So as we go into our time of inner work, I'd invite you to close your eyes for a moment and bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing. Just allow yourself to settle in for a moment. And with each breath, allow the area around your heart to become fuller and richer and deeper. And so as we join together in consciousness today, recognizing that it's at the point of our breath that the highest God and the innermost God become one God, I say, dear God, today I claim healing for anything that stands between us and you and the total well-being of our lives. Today I claim the healing power, the healing presence, the healing light, and the healing love of the loving universal mind is our divine right. And each of us, we open in heart and mind now to receive this healing power, this healing presence, this healing light, and this healing love. It fills us completely. And so for each and every one here today, I claim healing in all of our affairs, in all of our relations, and in all of our relationships. I claim for each and every one of us healing in our consciousness and our subconscious mind. I claim healing in our total being. For each and every one here today, I claim that we are healed from our past. And I claim that we are healed for our future. I claim healing in our physical body temple. I claim healing in our finances. I claim healing for all of those that we love and hold near and dear. And I claim for each and every one of us, knowing that my word is the word of God made manifest here and now, that no harm can come near any of us, near our dwelling or near those we hold near and dear in our heart. I acknowledge here and now that it is the Father, Mother, God within that does the works in each of our lives, in our bodies, in our bodies of affairs. I now know, I affirm and I claim that the healing power of life, of light, and of love that I know is God is showering upon each and every one of us filling us up, healing us up, raising us up. And I know all is well in our mind, in our body, in our spirit, and in our life. So we make room for all of those we hold near and dear in our prayer, surrounding them with a mantle of God's peace and love and healing. We let our prayer surround the globe, touching all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed, that we are raised up, that we are healed by being together today, that God is more God by means of us. And so with a grateful heart, I give thanks. I release this word into God's perfect law. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I am so 